Coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. We're going to talk about algae bloom or algal bloom. As well as what we can do over the winter months to prepare for gardening next year. And we have a guest from naturalnews.com, Joni Abbott. Plus your garden questions and all that starts right now. It's the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Welcome and so thankful that you have joined us on your Saturday morning to be part of our program. I'm your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, gardening partner. Hi, Barrett. It's our final show of season two of the uh, of the year. And uh, there's a number of ways in which you can contact us. If you have a question or comment, you can certainly do that by, one, calling in right now on the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Yeah, you can call 414-444-5250, Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard Naturally protects plants against damage and sunburn, insects and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and tree, trees. Shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, sh- trees and shrubs. This product is non non toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. Again, you can call at any time during the show to 414-444-5250. After the show, you can email us at twvgshow at gmail.com. You can always... You can email us anytime, even when we're not on the email. Uh, you can hashtag us, uh, hashtag TWVG on Twitter, and our Twitter handle is TWVGshow. Uh, well, again, this is the last show of the program of the of the season. We will be back next year, and if you were not with us last uh, week, uh, we made the announcement that we would be back uh, March second of twenty nineteen, every Saturday from March through October, as well as for our Philadelphia, Pennsylvania listeners on the podcast replay and in studio video replay. We will be up there on Sunday mornings on WWDB eight sixty a.m. Uh, from seven to eight a.m. So that's, uh, uh, we're moving, uh, we're expanding, yeah. right, right, mm-hmm. expanding uh, to reach more gardeners. And uh, so we're excited about that. More information, you can always follow us on our social media platforms, uh, Facebook. Uh, just search the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener there and you can find us. I want to get into the, the topic here. Um, and, and before we do that, that, by the conclusion of this show, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. We've done 35 shows this year. We've t- covered six, uh, 70 topics and interviewed 37 people. Uh, so it was a couple of times we had two people uh, as guests instead of one. Right, That's right. how that and math we had, works. We had one, well, two in studio guests, yeah. and that was the first for us. Well, so okay, yeah, I, I forgot. So we had 38, mm-hmm. 38. 38 people, right. Yeah. Yeah, so. first in studio guest ever. So let's get into the algae bloom uh, aspect of it. And, and I bring this up because prior to the hurricane that hit Florida, uh, we, there was a, a major red tide. We'll, we'll talk about okay, that. Okay, but it's where it's coming from. That's right. where this is derived from, mm-hmm. uh, the, the algae bloom. And we've had guests on the program that's talked about algae bloom and, and the devastational effects that it has on the environment. So first of all, let's go with what, what, we're, what algae bloom is here. Okay, so here's what happens. Algae bloom is excessive nutrients from soaps, fertilizers, etc. So anything that has a high nitrogen or phosphorus content, um, it's running off from t- uh, from different well, it's things. Runoff. It's runoff. Right? Over, over applications so it can run and off instances. from crops. It can run off from if you have a septic system. It can run off from a lot of things. And it's running off into large body of water, large bodies of water, not limited to Lake Michigan, um, the Great Lakes, mm-hmm. and then also even the ocean. And a lot of times what happens is that it runs off from the ocean or from the Mississippi River, into the Gulf. Which is a dead zone now. Right. And you can go on your favorite search and type in Gulf of Mexico dead zone, and you can see the progression of uh, over the last 30 to 40 years how it's progressively gotten deader and, and that, more So that's other. why they've taken a lot of things out of soaps, but it's still not still not gone. Well, first of all, when we talk about nitrogen and phos- uh, phosphorus, that is the first two numbers that are on a fertilizer bag. You'll see three numbers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. When we talk about those two, that's the first two numbers. Now, obviously, your your bar soap at home doesn't have a NPK level on it. But, again, that's what we're referencing when we talk about high nitrogen or high uh, phosphorus it's, it's level. A lot of, it's, a lot of times it's in things like uh, laundry soap, just soap, especially the cheaper stuff. It's got that, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's in it's, everything. It's in everything, but right. it's it's in those two main things because they're more water, more not water soluble, but they they rinse. They have like rinsing agents. In mm-hmm. them. Um, so, yeah. So, <clears throat> what happens is, especially in Lake Michigan, there's actually a huge dead zone in Green Bay area, like right in the bay of the Green Bay. 
So that's there as well. They're finding it also in parts of um, along the lake in Manitowoc and Sheboygan. Right. And, and this is not just... But that's they feel that's mostly from farms. Well, true. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll tell a story. And uh, also, yeah. if you there's this map that the DNR has where it shows how your water runs off and where, what basin it runs off to. And surprisingly, a lot of Milwaukee's water runs off actually toward, more towards... Um, not not like immediate Milwaukee, but the western part runs off more towards the Mississippi River. But then as you go north, it runs off more towards Lake Michigan. So is there, there's something online that kind of tells you where this flow yeah. is typical. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so I'll tell you, and it's not just to Lake Michigan or the Great Lakes or the coast of Florida, the Red Tide, or the Gulf of Mexico. This is prevalent in many Normal, ordinary farm ponds. Right. Uh, on the farm, grew up on a farm, for those who are not familiar with that, in southern Illinois. And we had a tremendous amount of problem with uh, algae in the spring. Mm-hmm. Now, the way ponds typically fill in a farmland situation, landscape, is fields drain into basins, which are, the, the, the farmers figured out, okay, this is the low spot, we're going to dig a pond here. So what water, the fields have what is called waterways, which is a designated grass area that is never tilled or planted, and it kind of filters the water and, and guides it to the pond to where it doesn't, uh, what we call, uh, wash out or cut, gr- uh, ditches in the field. This is a, a permanent area where it kind of like a, uh, a ditch in a, in a, a roadside, but not to that depth or extreme, uh, level. So in the spring, what happens in the spring and on farms? Plants, uh, crops get planted, fertilizer gets applied. Spring rains. A lot of that water washes the fertilizer, whether it's liquid and or granular, through that waterway or water basin and then into the pond. And then that's where algae bloom begins. So farmers will, if it's just for land, uh, uh, animal watering, it's not a big deal, but if they use that water to pump it, to other aspects or other applications on the farm, then that algae can actually affect pipes, uh, pumps, that type of thing. So they have to go in there and figure out some way to remove it, and they do apply chemicals or in some instances to kill that algae. Mm-hmm. They also do, there are fish that you can put in your pond that is designed that will eat the algae, um, and it can be an organic or an inorganic means in order to Get rid of the algae. Now, when you put chemicals in a pond and you're pumping that water to water animals, there is a certain toxicity which the animals can still sustain life, but it still kills the... Like, we eat food every day. It's got toxicities in it, and we're okay. Mm-hmm. That type of background of it. So what we would do on the farm is in the spring, once the algae bloom developed, um, we would go ahead and, and throw granular... Um, item, uh, it's, a, it's a granular type fertilizer material. It's not fertilizer, but it's a granular item that dissolves and eats away the algae. It kills the algae. And I, I'm not really sure the science behind why it does what it does, but that's what farmers would do. Right. So that is um, a good explanation on a smaller scale, essentially. So, so what happens is there's red tide, and what it is is it's affecting portions of the coast of Florida. It's mostly in Florida because it's part of that Gulf area, and what is is what it is is it's just because of the the toxins, because of the phosphorus and the nitrate, and it's actually causing fish, um, fish to die, respiratory irritation, and then sea turtles, manatees, birds, and dolphins are all getting choked out by this. Now, is it because the birds and the dolphins are eating the fish that have that toxicity in it? Is that the, the chain yeah. of command there? Yeah. And, and it's not just a few fish. You can go online. It's tonnage and multi- mm-hmm. mo- megatons of fish that are being, uh, the tides bringing up on the shore. And we've got, and, and before the hurricane, this was tr- a very big deal. But they don't think it's going to be gone. No, and, and that was the thing. People said, they, they asked these scientists, and, and you know, scientists don't, they, they don't know everything. They said, will this fix the problem, this hurricane? It's either going to fix it or make it a whole lot worse. Now, anything in life that you do, whenever the answer is, well, that, that medicine's either going to fix it or make you a whole lot worse. That's not the answer that you're hoping for for anything. Well, but this is where we are in the world. Yes. So um, at this point, yeah, scientists can only uh, figure so much stuff out, predict so much, but it's on us, really. And, um, and it's not just... The last six years. The no, last this eight has been years. going on for decades. Right, exactly. 
Yeah. And, and a lot of things in which we do in life, uh, we don't see the initial effects of it today, tomorrow, next year, two years from now. 15, 20, 30 years from now, we start seeing what we didn't think would be affected decades ago. And a lot of times, and, and this is just my personal opinion, a lot of times it's all derived from we can make money by doing this now. Forget about what it's going to do, or what the, the effects will be 15, 20 years from now. I can make buku dollars now, so I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's about right. And if we don't, it also comes down to the fact that um, don't want to get political, but we have politicians that don't uh, don't recognize this either. On both sides. On both sides. Both sides. Let's be fair. Now. No, on yep. both sides. Yep. And the problem is, is that we're also not teaching necessarily future generations the importance of how you're treating the planet. Right. Yeah. With all the plastic in the ocean, all that. But that, that's getting off the the topic here uh, <laughs> of of the algae bloom. Right. Well, so, algae bloom is a result of how humans affect the environment. Right. So yeah. with the algae bloom. Many people are listening going, okay, great, it's all this is happening. Nothing I can do now to fix the problem. Or is there? Um, essentially, you just it would just be a fact of things like not using those fertilizers. Overuse. Overuse of, of fertilizers. And, and so that, proper use. Proper, proper use, use is, is good. still does affect proper mm-hmm. use because it's runoff. The, or, the inorganic fertilizer bonds itself to water molecules, and water molecules go to... Basins of ponds, lakes, streams, rivers, and oceans. Yes. Even though we can do it moderately, it, we still there is still an effect that occurs. There's gonna yeah, there's gonna be an effect no matter what. But being aware of that is what's mm-hmm. important. Another thing is growing in ways that you reduce runoff. So like we use the raised berms mm-hmm. that can help reduce runoff. You can also and raised berms are designated slightly. Um, elevated areas of growth space where we plant and then there's designated walk paths and, and some people have what is called swells, which are larger kind of... Kind of like swells. Right, which to, to explain it to a way that is understandable, it's like a ditch that's exploded. It's mm-hmm. a hill that catches the water that gradually directs it in a certain direction and allows it to absorb into that mound of soil or dirt rather than just very quickly... Uh, flushing off of the property or down a stream and, and eroding the areas in which it's going across. The swell slows it down, allows the opportunity for that swell to soak in. And in the instance of the fertilizer, it allows that fertilizer to absorb into that soil, that hill, rather than flushing itself down the ditch and, and going that way. Right. So that is definitely one thing. Um, I don't, I, I haven't found out if it's, it's not really reversible, um, and that's... Well, a lot of the uh, environmental issues in which are uh, things that humans have done is not really fixable to a certain level. Right, that's definitely for sure. Um, um, so basically that's one thing, um, you can... I guess on on a smaller level, it's not really. It would be reversible over time. Mm-hmm. So if we control what we're sp- putting out there, starting today, starting today, it would take years, mm-hmm. decades. But over time, eventually, that algae bloom would reduce. The plants would start to regenerate. the The fish would start to reproduce. It it does. The sun the sun on the water helps it grow, but it can also help it dry out too. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, that being said, um, algae bloom, terrible thing uh, that we're experiencing, not only in the Great Lakes, the rivers, the waterways, the Gulf of Mexico, um, uh, and, and um, having problems with that is uh, affecting everything that we do because it affects, you know, like I talked about with the ponds and the, ri- uh, the, the pond and the pumps, it, it w- starts to clog the and has ill effects on the equipment that we use as well. So when we come back, we're going to talk about a little happier subject, which is what we can do over the winter months to prepare for spring and the next year's gardening plants uh, planting. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show.
24-7-365, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com has all the gardening information you need, videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Hostels wants to help you grow your own food. From seed starting supplies, hand tools, drip irrigation, harvesting equipment, and a complete line of all-natural pest control solutions, they've got you covered. Keep your garden weed-free with their time-tested, American-made wheel hose that are built to last a lifetime. And the Precision Garden Seeders have proven design for planting a wide variety of seeds. Haas Tools has what you need to get the most out of your growing space, large or small. Free shipping and outstanding customer service. Shop online or request a free catalog at HaasTools.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. An Oya is an unglazed porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed, container, or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through DrippingSpringsOyas.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. Purple Cow Organics quickly and naturally increases the uptake of nutrients and water to your plants with their new bioactive vegetable supercharger designed to meet the unique needs by helping the living organisms in the soil help plants uptake the nutrients more quickly through their roots and leaves. Find out more at purplecoworganics.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at thegardenershollowleg.com. Save 10% by by using the word veggies at checkout. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oil, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts Joey and Holly Baird. Well, winter is near, fall is getting close to being over, and for many of us, gardening season is pretty much done. Uh, we still have some items in the garden. We've got some yacons we're going to harvest, Jerusalem artichokes, Brussels sprouts, a few cabbages left. Uh, oh, leek, we do have leeks, and I think that's that pretty much it. Kale, we do have a lot of kale. But anyway. Uh, when, once we get that cleaned up, we're going to bring, and we have been bringing leaves in. Uh, it's odd that certain trees drop leaves. And there's certain part of the cities where you can look up and there's not a leaf anywhere. Everything's done in our part of the city where the large garden but is. But even, even I, when I was, when we were driving on here to the radio station, there's still a lot of well, true. leaves. And, and there's other parts of the city where there's not a leaf on a tree anywhere. The streets are covered and they've, they picked them up and took them in and everything. Uh, but but uh, with that being said, uh, there's things in which we can do now in order to prepare for spring gardening. Now I, I talk to people all the time, and you know people in Hawaii and Florida and all that. Oh, we 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 garden year round. I don't think you could uh, or I could handle that uh, that 365 uh, gardening no. all the time. No, we would we would not be in a good situation. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so I I look forward for, to spring. For us for or us, for gardening or for just for time? You hands. and I. Okay. All right. I look forward to spring every every winter. Mm-hmm. I do. But then I look forward to winter right. every fall. Um, and there's reasons for that. But I think the number one thing is is uh, just kind of being able to relax. Right. And, um, that, and that's the thing. I mean, with not going out and doing something in the garden. I mean, we have other things. Holly works full time. I work r- really f- 11 and a half months a year on this particular program, acquiring the sponsorship and reaching out and, and doing social things. Media and and social media mm-hmm. aspect, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, that, that relaxation time in the winter, once you've already gotten done. And let's face it, it's a nice time to stay in and relax. Um, nice to be out of the cold and out of the elements. Right. And it's a, it's a good time. But so there is some things we can do that's not highly, it involves a lot of effort. No, no. Uh, this could be part of your relaxing. Right now, though, you should definitely take a look at your garden and kind of reflect back on uh, what the did well. The good and the bad. The good and the bad. Yeah. Um, also, maybe what you might want to change um, as if your leaves haven't fallen off, you can maybe think about if you're going to expand where the shade would be, where the shade isn't, and maybe if you're going to get into a landscapey type situation, kind of think about that as well. Exactly. Uh, and if you're a big book reader, great time. We've had a lot of authors. There's a lot of great books yeah, of, of knowledge. It's not just, this is my story about when I was a gardener at, at age seven. There, there's a lot of instructional, informational, content-based books out there and if you don't like to read a lot some of them's got some really great pictures in them too yeah definitely you can also listen to podcasts watch videos catch up on all that maybe do some research you want well, to and that's the thing and you, you bring up the podcast and the videos if, if you're if if the, the great thing about podcasts you can do 10 other things while you're listening to a podcast for sure videos you pretty much if you're going to watch a video you're going to have to watch you can't be mowing grass and watching a video at the same time it, you know you, you understand what i'm saying it's a right. it's a one focus type of thing but there are great YouTubers out there, great videos. Not, I mean, we've put produced a, a great amount of 1,300 plus videos, whether in studio or in the garden. But there are great garden videos out there. Now, the thing that I will warn you when it comes to YouTube, just because somebody has a YouTube account doesn't mean the information that they're providing is always accurate. Just because somebody has a blog doesn't well, mean the information they're providing. So you might want to, if you come across, I mean, I've looked up recipes, come up across blogs, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. So if something seems off, you definitely want to cross-check what's going on. Yeah, and that's the thing with anything. And, and, and with us, even when we go to a reliable source, when we're looking up information for a question and or a topic for this program, we just do not go to the first, oh, blank, blank, dot com. We're going to copy that and use it. No, we don't. You, we reference two or three sources to make sure, even though we know the information is 100% correct ourselves, we still double check ourselves because we are putting information out there for you and you're trusting us with the information that we're providing. Yeah, we make mistakes just like everybody else has made mistakes, but we do our due diligence in order to obtain the correct information to provide you based on the topic in which we were covering, whether it's canning, uh, planting tomatoes, or harvesting beets, whatever the case may be. And, yeah, definitely is we make sure that we are providing the correct information and also that we have guests that will provide the correct information right. as Right, well. trusted, reliable, reputable guests that uh, we trust and we follow uh, That and, and we bring guests on that educate us. Right. It's not just, okay, we all know how to do X, Y, Z. We're going to tell all of you who are listening. How to, there's times we had uh, a lady, oh, I forget her name, about chickens. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have Joni on today mm-hmm. uh, about some uh, home remedies and, and vaccinations, that type of thing. Information that educates us as well, and that's part of the fun in what we do, that we get to learn along with all of you. And sometimes we get to laugh, too. Right. Right. So definitely do your research, do your due diligence. Take this time to learn, to read, to catch up. Um, plan. On, to plan. Definitely plan, 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 plan. Um, because once you... Get going like we do every spring. All of a sudden, now you have. Uh, I got to do all of this, all this in, in two days. Seedlings mm-hmm. uh, growing out your living room and. Um, and, and maybe and, and you bring that up. Know, maybe yeah. next year you don't start seedlings. Maybe you just go to your garden center and buy them all. And 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 the investment and is worth it. And there's really no there's no uh, shame in that. If you feel that you want, we to we had to do that, that this year and it worked right. out great. Yeah, it worked out great. So. 
definitely kind of take that into consideration. It's it's kind of like us trying to grow broccoli and cauliflower. We tried, 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 and we're like, you know what? We'll leave that to somebody who can, and we'll use that space for something else. Right, and, and we have accepted that as well. But, yeah, plan. And, and if you're going to start seeds, um, come and, and you're a big M.I. Gardener fan, I think it's um, early November. All his 2019 seeds will be in the store, and he's going to have more than – uh, 450 varieties come uh, 2019. Yeah, those seed catalogs seem to come early and early every year, so definitely check those out and check out M.I. Gardner and his great um, his great products that he has. Right, so, and uh, then, but but most of all, relax, enjoy. enjoy. Remember the good times, learn from the bad times, and enjoy. This is not your job. This is something we all do for fun. Mm-hmm. And, 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 the, and the benefit of what when we do things for fun, like gardening, if we have a fail, it, it's not like we're not going to eat tonight. When we have a fail, it's not like we're we're we're, we're uh, keeping our family from eating. We can go to the gar- we can go to the grocery store. We can go to Woodman's, Outpost, Beans and Barley, and pick up food. It's not like we're in a third world country where it's live or die based on the decisions right. that we make. So enjoy. It. I know Holly and I work very very hard to make sure we have minimal amount of fails because. This is kind of our job. This we mm-hmm. want to show people video wise right. that we that you can do this, and we make the mistakes for you. So uh, some of the things in which you can do over the uh, winter months uh, to get ready for spring next year. Well, when we come back, author and uh, podcaster and contributor to uh, Natural News and Homegrown Health uh, founder Joni Abbott will be with us right after. Got a question? Email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available. Open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from Plant Success Organics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination ability and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. Plant Success Organics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvests. For more information and to purchase, visit Plant Success Organics. Woodman's is a Wisconsin-based family-owned company founded in 1919. They offer low prices in every single aisle every day. No need to carry a discount card. From produce to meat to international to natural and organic, all offered at the lowest possible prices. Over 60,000 products at every store. Service and savings every day. They're employee-owned to help you save money. They also offer online shopping for pickup and delivery, working to save you more money. Visit woodmans-food.com to find the nearest location. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at ZazProducts.com. Tall Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique silver-aged wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunks. Find out more at TallEarth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code WISCON. VEG to save 15% off orders placed at TallEarth.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at ShieldAndSeal.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oil, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Kelly Baird. Well, 
It's the uh, end of our show, or not yet, but it's the last show of the season, but that doesn't mean it's the last day that Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center is going to be open for business. They're going to be open. I talked to John there, uh, and they're going to be open until the snow flies, which may be next week, or it may be the first week in December. We don't know, and uh, some people are hoping it's next week, and other people don't want it ever to be ever. Uh, but they're going to be well, open. If they don't want it ever to be ever, they're probably in the wrong state. Yeah, yeah, you got to go south yes. mm-hmm. uh, on that one. But they've got 40 varieties of bulk material, the largest in the area, in which you can select whether purple cow and or uh, sand, gravel, whatever the case may be. And this goes back to our, our planning statement. Maybe you want to plan for some bulk material in the spring or now. Right, and that's the thing, and and uh, I've I've done it to where you don't have to have a truck. People think whenever you got to, whenever we speak about bulk material, that you're like, oh, I don't have a truck. Doesn't apply to me. Uh, you can do it without a truck. I've done it with friends who had cars. Um, uh, what, I've I've done it with friends who have had cars, and and we have uh, done it very very well. Without any issue, just take a couple of buckets and uh, go to the um, go to the the place and tell them that uh, I've got a car, and then they'll direct you in what material you need, whether it's uh, landscape material of sand, gravel, mulch, whatever the case is. It uh, doesn't make a difference. Um, so. Uh, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center. Where uh, can we find Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center, Holly? We can we can find Blue Mel's at uh, 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. So it's 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton. BlueMel's.com or call 414-282-4220. And tell them that we sent you. Well, Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. All right. So Joni Abbott has combined her love for radio, natural health, on natural news to bring us Homegrown Health, a radio show that pertern- p- pertains to everything family, healthy families, healthy living, and a homegrown lifestyle. Welcome to the program, Joni. Hi, thank you. Hi, Joey. Hi, Holly. It's been a while since we've spoken, and I'm so happy to hear that you're doing your own show. Well, we thank you for that, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the program. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so I want to ask you, for people who are unaware uh, Monsanto was taken to court. Monsanto is the major chemical company. Uh, they are the founder or the creator of what we know as Roundup. Uh, and, and they, they were taken to court and the verdict was not in their favor. They were, t- uh, they, they appealed the verdict and it still was not in their favor. They reduced the fines tremendously. The judge did. Um, but what are your thoughts on how the verdict finally wasn't in Monsanto's favor. Monsanto has been taken to court many, many times in the United States, and every time the company has always won their case. Yeah, well, I am ecstatic that now precedence is set uh, for agrochemical companies um, that the people are not going to um, allow them to intentionally hide the dangerous side effects of these chemicals and... Um, that we're going to be suffering the side effects as a result. A lot of people don't remember or understand or didn't read into the fact that not only did glyphosate cause cancer in this case, in this particular case with Dwayne Johnson, but he all, but Monsanto also was charged and found guilty for intentionally hiding its dangers. And that does not allow us as consumers to make educated decisions when those things are not being dis- disclosed to us. And this was a one-two jab for Bayer, who purchased uh, Monsanto over the summer for $57 billion um, because Bayer is also in another lawsuit uh, for a faulty birth control device for women. Um, there is a movie called The Bleeding Edge. It's available on Netflix now. You can watch it, and it showcases and highlights uh, Bayer's other dirty deeds in the medical device industry as well. So they are really getting hit hard with their stocks crashing and everything as a result of uh, Monsanto's verdict. Now, I was sad to see that the judge didn't uphold the $289 million award for this man. Um, it was reduced to $78.5 million. But big win for citizens, and I hope it sets precedence for more agrochemicals in the future. 
Well, and that's the thing. A, a lot of things in life, if there's just a warning on the package that says this could cause blank, 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 life's a lot easier for everybody because it's it's out there. You can't blame somebody for what is not being printed. If it's on the package, then there's no liability, I, I guess is the best way to put it. Right, right. It can be a lot easier if uh, full disclosure is really what's most important. But as we know, full disclosure and um, corporate uh, interest doesn't always go hand in hand. Right. If, if it's more, if, if we can make more money and just pay out a lawsuit every now and then instead of telling everybody and then hurting us in the long run, it, you know, it's that type of uh, mindset that's not always eth- ethnic uh, or, or, or um, Right, I guess is the word to use. Ethical. Yeah. Ethical. yeah. Ethical. Right. Okay. So, um, breastfeeding is very, uh, co- it's very common and is something that is recommended for newborns and young, uh, infants. Um, some women can't achieve that and that's okay. But in general, it seems to be looked down upon so heavily in today's society when a lot of us, I know I think it's just a natural thing and a good thing. Um, but why is it so looked down? I mean, you see half naked women in dis- in display ads, but as soon as somebody you know whips that out for its intended purpose, um, then it's like it's offensive. Right. Well, there's a couple of things going on with that. I think a lot of it too is a lack of education. We haven't normalized breastfeeding enough um, within our own family structures and within our own communities to. Uh, really make it not a big deal for other people to see. Um, most women I know who breastfeed do so in a discreet manner, and they walk around and most people don't even know that they're breastfeeding. I know that's how it was for me. There's lots of ways that you can do that. Um, and I and lack of education. I think if, if more women and families were to really educate themselves on the powerful benefits of breastfeeding and knowing that it's going to take time to learn how to do because mom's learning and baby is learning and um, it does take a little bit of a time to adjust. But um, the education on not only how to, um, what to do when you run into some issues, but having a strong support system. So I, I cannot recommend for pregnant women and families enough to attend La Leche League meetings. Um, find a great lactation consultant in your area who comes highly recommended um, and have them on hand. And when you go to these meetings and you watch other women breastfeed, then you educate and you're learning kind of uh, in a visual way how it's done. Most women don't know how to breastfeed. That's Stuff doesn't come with a manual, <laughs> so it's um, it's very important to to provide a lot of support for our breastfeeding communities and um, to help normalize it by not hypersexualizing breasts. It's you know um, they they uh, make milk. We have milk ducts and milk glands in our breast tissue and, and breast anatomy for a reason. And if we can just understand that it's a baby's right to have whole, nutritious, raw food (laughs) coming from mom and that our body produces and makes it. Um, And it really is the perfect food for our babies. It adjusts at any given time to your baby's um, specific nutritional needs. And I think that's fascinating. Absolutely. Well, as winter approaches, uh, what are some things that we can do for our skin that's natural? There's a lot of stuff in which we can rub on our arms and hands that we all know is not good for our bodies. What are some natural ways in which we can keep our skin healthy during the colder months of the year? Well, Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said that your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And he also said all disease begins in the gut. So when you start even noticing, you know, dry skin in the winter, hey, you want to stay hydrated. You want to keep those organs hydrated with clean water to make sure that your body, your skin doesn't get dry. Um, In the winter, we tend to drink more coffee or hot liquids. Um, We're also not getting vitamin D, so you want to make sure you're consuming foods, berries in particular, that will um, allow your body to have not only the antioxidants, um, but the um, vitamin D that you're not getting from outside. So increasing your um, intake of things with vitamin D would be helpful. Um, sea minerals, make sure, you know, you get your bone broth in and uh, some of the, even guard the foods that you've gardened over the summer that you've canned and put up for the winter. That's a really good uh, good way to get the nutrients that we aren't getting as the colder months and uh, clouds start to cover our ability to absorb as much sun. 
No, definitely. Now, there's a major dis- divide between pro-vaccine people, anti-vax people. Um, I know that a lot of people are saying, you know, polio is coming back, measles is, are coming back, things like that. Um, what's the viewpoint on vaccinating your children? Where do you fall in this category? You know, kind of uh, if you want to speak to vaccinations and if people are um, being over-vaccinated. Being over-vaccinated. Also, people are concerned about things like polio and measles and and stuff that has been eradicated and now it seems to be coming back. Right. Well, this is a really huge topic, and this could be a whole, you know, five-day show if we were to um, really dig into this topic and give it the the, the um, attention it deserves. Um, what I can speak to is educate, educate, educate before you vaccinate. The package insert that you do get at your pediatrician's office is is not a full disclosure of all of the side effects and risks. It is a very condensed, watered-down version, and um, I don't know that most people are aware about the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program that is funded by our government. $3 billion or more have been awarded to citizens who have vaccine reaction and injury. However, I will tell you that your ability to get through the litigation process in a National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program court is is nothing shy of absolutely, uh, it's just exhausting. Um, they have a lot of protocol and wording and usage of the words that have to be just so and just right in order for them to even acknowledge a vaccine injury. It doesn't take rocket science to understand that your child will get a vaccine and if they have the same symptoms as it is written in the vaccine insert. So when you we want to read the package inserts and research all of the things in that insert um, before you vaccinate your child. And it's a very tedious task. Many people won't do it. Um, but we have to educate first. We also need to take a good look at history, too, and the history of diseases and how things like measles started to decline before the vaccine was ever even invented. And then we also need to look at biology and physiology and looking at how our immune system develops, how our immune system functions. For instance, you know, we get our immune system in utero and vaginal birth helps to feed our immune system. And we get disease through our mucosal membrane, eyes, ears, mouth. That is how our body is designed to respond to disease. So on a basic foundational level, it does not make sense to me to inject something into intramuscularly or indirectly into the blood because your body has a completely different immune response than it does when you get the disease um, naturally through your mucosal membranes and having it processed through the body the way that it was designed to um, first come into contact with disease. Um, as far as things coming back, it is, uh, a common book, it is, well, it's provable, and, it, and it's very um, much understood that oftentimes when you get the vaccine, you get the disease that you're vaccinated for. And what we discovered during the polio outbreak was that DDT, which was a, a pesticide, a deadly pesticide they were spraying on communities to keep the mosquito population down, was actually causing this. Uh, the paralysis and was causing the symptoms of polio. They also forgot to deactivate simian virus 40, and that was a live virus that also helped contribute to the spread of the polio disease and epidemic that we all hear the horror stories about. What's happening now is children who are getting vaccinated are actually having the polio-like symptoms. And um, there are more statistics and much more research and much more studies um, that <laughs> would need to be talked about the dress in more detail. But, um, yeah, do your research. That's the best thing I can tell you is to do your research, read the package inserts. Um, a lot of checkbook science goes into the majority of these industries, especially with that, like in agrochemicals, in our food, and in our vaccines, and in our medicine. Um, we need to, to really understand that, that checkbook science is, not necessarily died in the wool true science. 
any company can buy and pay for those research papers. Absolutely. Well, Joni, we greatly appreciate you coming on the program. How can we find out more about you? I know you've relaunched the uh, your your podcast that you had uh, that was kind of dormant for a while. Uh, where can we find more about you? I have. Thank you so much. So Homegrown Health is my podcast. It's a weekly podcast. It comes out every Wednesday, and you can find me on SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes. I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. On Instagram, I'm at the only Jeff Joni. So I would love to, yeah, have more interaction with you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and she covers these topics and a whole lot more on her podcast. You should certainly check it out. Well, Joni, thank you very much for taking time out of your day, not only to educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. Thank you so much. And when we come back, it's our thank you segment that you're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B O B B. BEX.COM. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root bound plants, to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Rebel Green. Responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA. Plant based. Vegan and always toxic free. Find out more at RebelGreen.com. Use coupon code WIVEG15 to save 15% off your next purchase at RebelGreen.com forward slash shop. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is brought to you by the following. Handy Safety Knife, BioSafe, Tall Earth, Chapin International, The Plant Booster, Ivy Organics, Woodman's Market, Blue Mills Landscaping Garden Center, Purple Cow Organics. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. We want to thank Ivy Organic 3 one Plant Guard uh, for their sponsorship for our call in line. Uh, and, um, we, uh, yeah, we got We want to thank them for, for supporting us and uh, doing that. And uh, we want to thank a lot of other people. This is our thank you segment. We've got a lot of people. We do this each year. 
um, at the last segment of the last show. And Holly, you've got a few people you want to thank. Yeah, I want to thank my friend Laura. She's the one that does that voiceover for us. She's my uh, good buddy, and she does it for the low, low cost of chocolate. <laughs> so <laughs> she uh, she's definitely uh, a great help, and and um, we're, we're appreciative of that uh, cheap labor there. And I want to thank our soundboard engineer, Mr. Debo. He's um, a great help to us, too. He does this every week. As, uh, and, and definitely that. Um, and, and then I've got a lot of people to thank. First, I want to thank uh, a good friend of mine, Jen, or Jennifer. I, I call her Jen. Um, she's helped in uh, streamlining how I do what I do and in order to reach out to companies. Uh, we can. We, Holly works full time. I do this full time. So there's different aspects of what we are able to uh, do and and work together on. But Jen has been a, a tremendous help in order to uh, help organize and um, streamline the way I, I reach out she, to companies. She definitely has. Um, it's something that Joy and I've been doing this for a long time. Even though this is only our second season, we've been doing the whole entire thing for eight years now. Yes. I think. And it's nice to have that third party that has come in and taken a look and been like. This is what's going to help you. Yeah. Because what what are you fresh... trying to say? Because we think we know what we're saying, right. but her, she it's doesn't. Fresh under... eyes. Yeah, it's fresh eyes. Yeah, if you're a new, co- if you're a sponsor, here's what we'd be sending you, and she'd be like, "This needs to be changed. This needs to be. This doesn't make sense." I understand you know what it means, but I need to understand from an independent person what you're asking or what you're portraying there. So we want to thank uh, Jennifer. Uh, Jen for that. Uh, she's been a tremendous, tremendous help in getting us where we are for next year at this point. Um, I'm going to thank a lot of other people, but I think they will appreciate and, and understand why I'm going to start where I'm going to start here. Um, I'm going to go to church for a minute here. In 2015 to 2016, we failed miserably at this. Holly and I both worked full time, and in order to produce a program like this, that doesn't work because people who you are reaching out to work during the day, not from 8 p.m. to midnight at night. So in January of 2016, I lost my job, and... I told Holly, I said, let's try this radio thing one more time. And you said. I don't remember what I said. You said absolutely not. No, because we almost, we almost like ended our marriage mm-hmm. before that. We in, were in so the, frustrated. In the fall of t- 2015. Yeah. yeah. So I said, okay. I said, one more shot. If, if we're not, if it's not meant to be, we're going to fall flat on our face with this and we know that we'll just do something else. So we took a leap of faith, and, and when people see our media kit, for those who uh, we send that out to, it says, we took a leap of faith. Now, for those who are in the biblical and, and religious and spiritual world, you understand what that means. For others of you, I'll, I'll translate biblically what a leap of faith is. It's Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, now faith is the substance, which uh, the substance of the things hoped for, which we hope for to have a radio show, the evidence of things not yet seen, which is the radio show. So we took a leap of faith. Not sure where we were going to go if this was what we're supposed to do because many people, we all have a journey in life. Many of us don't want to take that first step because we're scared of where it may take us or the destination in which we may end up. And that destination where we end up is supposed to be where we're uh, designed to be at and to do what we're supposed to do, but we're too scared to take that step. So we took the step in order to have a radio show. So I, I grew up in a little Baptist church in the country, and, and, and many of you who are uh, churchgoers, you understand the power of prayer. And I've seen it heal little kids to changing drug addicts to back to, to normal per- persons in society. So I began to pray. I said, hey, if this is what we're supposed to do, let us go in the right direction. Let us get in contact with the right people. And, and you're like, well, what, why, why would you pray about a little radio show? Well, because the Bible says over a hundred times, ask if mm-hmm. you if you mm-hmm. want something. Ask and, and mm-hmm. find favor. Uh, Philippians four six. Do not be anxious in anything, but in everything by prayer, supplementation with thanksgiving, and let your request your request be known to God. So that's what we did. We said, hey, if this is what we're supposed to do, let us fall. Let, let us find the right people. Well, it started working and it started getting closer, and more companies we started contacting. And they started saying yes to things and sponsorship, and we made the show work last year. So then we said, okay, maybe this wasn't a fluke. Maybe this was really our destination. This was the journey in which we were supposed to be on. The destination is not yet achieved. Uh, What about next year? Let's see if we can do that. That was for this year. And we were able to fund the show this year. Right. And for next year, we're going to be back and in another market in Philadelphia. So it's a tremendous thing in order to trust and believe and take the journey, take that faith, and trust that where your destination will go 
uh, you will be guided by that, uh, and, and you shouldn't be anxious, but be, be grateful and, and ask for direction and help in prayer in everything that you do. Well, you're always welcome any time, as we've talked about many times on the program. You can reach out to us at TWVGshow at gmail.com. We've got a uh, lot of new things coming up for Season 3 next year, and we can always answer your questions, whether it's about seeds or soil or plants or anything of a canning of that nature. We'll certainly get you the right answer. Well, we, we we thanked a few people. We want to thank some more people, and this may be you know not entertaining or educational for anybody, but it's what we do each year, the final segment of our final show of the season. This is not something that's easy for us to do. Uh, I mean, the show is easy to do because we know what we're talking about. What I mean is to fund the show. This is we don't have an agency that goes out and purchases sponsors, uh, and, and then pa- they pay us for the airtime. Uh, we have to pay the airtime. Let's be honest with it. That we don't walk in here and we get to do this for free. We pay the airtime through the sponsors you hear uh, on the program. Uh, we do this all ourselves. Holly and I reach out to hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of companies, uh, local as well as nationwide, in the gardening, health, organic world to entertain uh, the ideal for them to come on and be a sponsor. And, and we've had, uh, this year we had 28 companies to do such. Uh, we are still working on next year's. And uh, there are some of these who I will mention that our current sponsors this year have already re-upped and agreed to come back. Others have chose to go a different direction uh, because of their marketing plan and their uh, outlook on their company. But we want to thank Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oyas, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Promona Universal Pectin, Flame Engineering, Eco Garden System, Bob X, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Assassin, Manure Tea, The Gardener's Hollow Leg, Handy Safety Knife, BioSafe, Tall Earth, Chapin Manufacturing, International, The Plant Booster, Ivy Organics, Woodman's Market, and Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. These are the sponsors that have made this show possible for us to bring to you, and we're extremely thankful for that. We also are thankful to the staff uh, and WNOV because they allow us to do what we do, and uh, Without them, we can't have this. A short story, we reached out to a number of radio stations in the Milwaukee area several years ago when we had this vision of having a radio show, and many of them was receptive. We met with them, and they basically said, hey, that's fine. Come on the program, or come on our station. Here's how much it's going to cost, and here's how you're going to do the show, and here's how it's going to go down, and here's how much it's going to cost. And really, the control aspect of the program was not in our hands, and that's not what we wanted. We reached out to WNOV. Homer Blow uh, said that he had always wanted to have a garden radio show on the airwaves here, and as long as we fulfilled the FCC requirements and paid the the hourly fee there for the for our show here. We have complete control over the the whole show, and that's what we want to do. If we're going to come and bring you a program that's going to inform you and educate you, we want to have complete control, and that's what they've given us, Homer. And uh, we want to thank Debo for running the soundboard. Keon, he's been here. Rick, he's been here. Homer, he's ran the board for us. So it's really, really great uh, to be a part of the program, and uh, it's been a very cool uh, in experience, and you can catch all of our shows on podcast replay and in studio video of season one and season two. So until next year, uh, we want you to be safe out there. If you see something, say something, and have a good day. And in order to have somebody else to have a good day, just smile at them and wave. And remember, we're all in this together, and we all help each other out. So until next year, for Holly Baird, I am Joy Baird. And we will see you next year for Season 3 of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show.
You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM. Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.